Alright ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. Now as you know, I'm an economics graduate from the University of York. I graduated this year and today we're going to be reacting to a series called Industry. Now Industry is all about investment banking, trading securities and it's all about working in that intense city banking life environment in Canary Wharf and that sort of thing. And it is essentially what I wanted to go into when I first started economics. And I think it's what most people want to go into when they decide to do something finance related. And basically a few people have said that I would like this and I should react to it for my channel. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Apparently I'll be able to see what I missed out on from choosing to do drama instead of investment banking, trading securities, stocks and shares for a company, which is what I wanted to do. So I'm actually kind of curious to see, to see what it's like. This is literally the life I would have had right now if I decided to stay in the field of my degree. I have no clue what I think it would be like. I don't know about how much I back myself to do the work, but I definitely back myself to fit in in that sort of environment. I don't know, is that a good thing though? Well, I mean, everybody thinks they're fitting in that sort of environment, I guess. Don't know how long I'll be able to stick it out for though. But yeah, also, if you're looking, if you're looking for a cheap Christmas present, um, go cop a student vlog's phone wallet. They're very cheap, you're supporting the channel, and they're perfect for any Christmas present for somebody who's at university or traveling around loads, because they stick on the back of your phone, and they're basically a phone wallet for when you're going clubbing, when you're going out, and you don't have to take your wallet. And yeah, they just really support the channel, and they're cheap, and basically, as I said before, I bought like 500 of them because of economies of scale, and then I realized that the economies of scale prospect was too enticing, I bought too many, and now I'm struggling to ship them all. So please, if you want to support the channel, I would love that, but let's jump in to reacting to industry. So we're about to react to episode one of industry. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen or how it's going to go down. We're going to see the life of graduates in the big, big city world, which so many people aspire to, including to myself at a young age. Blah, 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 blah. I've never seen anyone put their IQ on a CV before. <laughs> how many of these have you had? Nine. Four in New York, four here, and uh, Skype. Why are you here then? Well, it's not very... Poor! That was surprisingly harsh. In my head, interviews and interviewees are always so nice and all like, Oh, you've had nine hours, all good. Like, no one really seems to be that harsh, but that was... It's a good point. I mean, if you've had nine interviews for one singular section of a job and you've been unsuccessful nine times, why are you failing? It's a good question to ask yourself. That man looks harsh. It's that sort of thing where it's the elephant in the room. Obviously in finance, they're just straight cutthroat like boom. I guess they don't mess around. Economics, cut out the time waste of beating around the bush, just straight. Why are you here? Political answer, but I think mediocrity is too well hidden by parents who hire private tutors. I am here on my own. I want to be able to explain myself Good answer. clearly um, and have people be receptive to my ideas. Is that how you get your validation? People listening to you? As opposed to... Uh, Every successful business mm. is full of... Harsh again. It's making me think that everybody in finance is super harsh. Like I never went to any of these sort of test the days, open days or assessment days because I knew I wanted to go into acting. But I don't ima I never imagined them to be like this or to be like this. And they might not be, but it's straight up cutthroat. Like they were preying on her nerves. People who've spent money nurturing unremarkable talent. Why did you read geography? Geography had the least amount of applicants the year before. It's a marginal game about marginal gains. I think <laughs> that that is that is quite a smart answer. So he did geography because it was the easiest to get into and probably, you know, the easiest to do well in. It's a marginal game about marginal gains. He's basically implying that life's a game about every small increase and every small gain you can make is a step forward. And he's a bit of a lad, isn't he? Like I don't think I'd be like this guy. I'm Let's see what they respond. About marginal gains. Nothing wrong with the back door. I play third fiddle to two figures in my mother's life. Jesus Christ and Margaret Thatcher. And where do you stand on them? One's the reason we're all here and the other's a carpenter. I think this is the closest thing to a meritocracy there is. And I only ever want to be judged on the strength of my abilities. And paid for it. Mm -hmm. Everything is about money. That's such a key point. Everything is about money. Like, it just is. He, you want to do X, Y, but you want to get the money. You want to do this money. It always, everything in life always seems to come back to money. But I guess what's going on right now is that everybody here is being interviewed by their potential future boss. I guess they will get the job. But let's see. Realize that we recruited from SUNY Binghamton. It's a non-target. Can you tell us a joke? Uh, yeah. 
uh, uh, it's a bit for work, um, or whatever. You know how many mountains I'd have to move to get you to London for good? Whoa, whoa. He said, can you tell me a joke? Did he even say a joke? I don't even think he did. If the one thing my careers department told me at York University in Sydney was like, always just in case if you're going to an interview, have a, have a joke lined up just in case. And I guess that is a prime example of where, when, you, when you'd say the joke. Um, but I always imagine like, it, it, if they're like, tell me a joke, and you panic, you'd be like your face. But I don't know if they'd find that funny, but it would be quite funny. Why would you not use all of it? That's fair enough. How's your model? We finish in the morning. Send it over my way. I've got mm. capacity. How do you have capacity? Brutal finance guy, innit? I don't know what that is. Isn't it? You're bouncing. <laughs> hey, man, hey, it's only 10.15. No one here is actually going to tell you this, but you need to put in FaceTime. Actually, I don't. Firstly, this guy's from ENDS. He said in it and bouncing. And he, he's trying to, they're already looking at creating models. That's the one thing I can never do is have the patience to sit down, create a forecasting model, an economic model, and work on it and work on it till it's perfected. But obviously this, these two are in this sort of um, forecasting department, making models, yet to be fully revealed. But um, my guys, he's out here already trying to get on the good books and, and stay over time and do people's work for him. But I, I do kind of like this, the inherent confidence to be like, nah, I'm going home. But you really have to put in FaceTime. Being up on that doesn't enhance my work. Mm. Having said that, everybody at uh, uh, university stays up late in the light to revise. Everybody, night owls, especially in the library at uni. Mate. Mate. Oh, man. Okay, so let's, I can't quite read what he's doing. He's doing a valuation summary. He's looking at a management case. He's looking at something to do with triple threats, but it's, he, he's obviously a new graduate there and he's already trying to, trying to stay late nights and, you know, work through the night. And I know some places, they have um, beds inside the buildings. It's mainly for naps, apparently, but like, I imagine a lot of people, if you're hammered with work in the finance industry and in any big accounting industry, they probably, like, have to stay overnight to get, to get all the work done. And obviously, like, if you're an economist, then it's gonna, you finish your work at 10, let's say, it takes you two hours to get home, two hours to get there in the morning, and you have to be in for six. That's, you, you may as well just stay, stay in the, the building. So I think it's quite good sometimes to have beds. It's a marginal game about marginal gain. If you can gain on sleep by staying in the building, you may as well do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking into the business you did. Right, uh, priorities. Shall we get some wine that doesn't taste like paint dinner? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you uh? Do you know? Okay, so uh, obviously one of the clients is having a meeting. She's the one of the graduates been brought into a meeting with one of the big clients. And they're just looking to get drunk here. All the big city boys after their uh, work day, probably a Friday or Thursday, they've gone to the pub. And like, it's mad. If you ever go into London on the on the weekdays and you see us after work time, like everybody's just like, blazers on their arm, top bun undone, tie off, having a few schooners, having a few beers. And it was kind of like just the life that I wanted for a while. And it's like, yeah, like, especially in the summer when everyone's having a few drinks after work, it looks. Saying everything's gonna be okay over and over doesn't stop your house burning down around you, does it? Eventually we shall be eating our pets. Well, if that's your philosophy, you could trade it. Mm, extremely reasonable. That's twice the price. No, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. It is reassuringly expensive. Buy an option on the US tenure at 4%. <laughs> Yields haven't been there since before you were born. Actually, since the early aughts. Yield is essentially how much money you're going to make off uh, of an asset. If there's a yield of 5%, then that would determine how much money the asset brings you, etc., etc. And an option gives you the right to buy or sell an asset. It's an option, essentially, so... Let's see what they have to say. Were you even sentient then? Sorry, Nicole, graduates don't normally pitch. Mm. Fuck that, let her talk. Mm. With the president bulldozing the reputation of US overseas, you know, for me it follows that the administration will totally kill the rep of treasuries. And pissing in China's mouth isn't gonna help. Exactly, personally, I just think we're doing an enormous sell-off. We're low-key throwing ourselves in cold wars with all of our trading partners. China are the biggest global holder of US paper. 
If they start dumping, yields will soar past 4%. If you think the house is burning down, this is how you monetize it. So there's a bit of fundamental analysis on how she could potentially make a trade and make loads of money. Obviously, because it's not technical, there's no numbers, there's no facts, there's no graphical analysis. That's what she's doing, fundamental analysis. It's, it's mainly, I'd say, a lot more logical and based on reason and, and likelihood of something happening. She's obviously caught our attention. She's onto something about the the yields changing if China alter the cash. I, I guess, I don't know how true this is based on real life, if that makes sense, but we'll move on. Okay, so little update. Basically, one of the clients was um, quite touchy-feely with one of the, the graduates, but the graduate didn't say anything. The guy who was working overtime and overnight is really still working late nights and overtime to try and get the work done, put in the FaceTime, like he said. Um, the other two guys, I think they're relatively keeping it cool. And the other lady who at the start what likes to express herself by talking is doing a lot of the coffee runs. And you can kind of see how every different graduate is slightly fitting into this network. Some are making progress but being used. Some are just trying to, to be the, 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 the dream graduate and trying to really get that time in. And others are kind of maybe slacking, maybe not quite fitting in or maybe just being used to get coffee runs or that sort of thing. And there's, there's a bit of banter about, you know, Hey, take that, take that badge off, or take that shirt pocket off, or that sort of thing. It's um, it's interesting. It seems quite a ferocious place they make it out to be. Mm. Okay, so Harry's drawing up a little mind map of a. Uh, the hierarchy and the thing. He's obviously looking to climb it big time. He's an investment banker. Um, and then we've got the other main, the other lead is essentially in a club. Now, I think the girl convinced him to do some, and uh, now we're, we're essentially in the party, party world. This is about respect. There will be an inquiry into the circumstances. I'm not going to show the actual footage, but essentially the guy that was working really hard, taking meds, staying up all night, um, he messed up one of the reports, one of the pages, the fonts, and he finally got rewarded and called into a meeting, but then because he messed up the font um, and was taking loads of drugs, I think, to stay up and work on it, that he uh, essentially uh, passed away, and they just had a meeting about saying, don't talk to the press, we're going to look into it, and it, it just goes to show you how, how much pressure there can be, I guess, in an environment like that. I don't know, he's working so hard, really wanted to impress, really wanted to do well, but number one rule of anything, listen to your body and mind and put yourself first, I guess. But the graduates are just reacting to that. And it's such a big, serious issue, um, like mental health, especially now. And I can't imagine the pressure some people feel in an environment like that when you're a graduate and your boss tells you, can you get this done? And you say, yeah, I can get it done. But actually you can't get it done. And as a graduate, you're probably pushing, I must get it done at all cost. And I guess sometimes you have to say, and you know what, I can't get it done even if you don't end up getting the job full time or it's easier said than done though, that's for sure. I would I would feel the pressure to get it done even if I couldn't. Like I don't even know what I'd do in that situation. Stay up all night probably as well. So it's a kind of, it is an eye-opening situation. Okay, so she's going in to close her first deal. With the lady from earlier who Hello. she had a meeting with. Cool, hi, it's Harper from Pierpoint. That option idea we talked about? It was a fun night. Let's go for it in half a yard. Oh, Rishi. Again. Rishi. Yeah, Rishi, I said your name, dude. Can you price that option idea we talked about? Half yard? No way. It's way than lottery. And how the hell have you got someone to buy an option on treasury yields hitting 4%? I told her that eventually the US is going to war in the South China Sea. When they do, this pays out. All right, can do it in half her amount. Nicole, can we do half? No, you want to write my business, you fill me on my first order, in full. Two sex. Need it in full, can you help? No way, I can't price it without losing money. That's half a billion. The client will not hear no, and I'm not interested in that either. Okay, so she's making her first deal. Half a yard is like, 
I think it's half a billion because it's just a, it's a financial term for a billion. So half yard must be half a billion. And there's a bit of back and forth negotiation between the two de two desks. Obviously, they both, um, he probably specializes in closing the deal and that sort of thing. She's a negotiator. I don't really know what's going on, um, but I know she, there's a bit of bartering. And this is essentially why every financial office has so many phones because you've got to ring your pal over here, see if it's possible. Ring your pal over here, see if it's going to work. Office five beeps. Offers five basic points. Too high, I'll pay four cents and up to 250. Basic points is the um, interest rate sort of thing. That's for you. Can't do five. Four, please. They're paying for your idea. Make them pay. Four cents. Four cents. Because I'm excellent, four cents. Do I just say done? Half a yard, done, four cents. Half a yard, done, four, four cents. cents. Let's see where this takes us. Yo. Is it kind of sad that that sort of thing does give me a bit of goosebumps? Just like closing a big financial deal like that, feeling like the man or the woman or feeling like whatever in that moment. Like that sort of thing gives me goosebumps, man. Bit cringe, I know, if you're not finance related, but. <laughs> the boss is. forget how this feels right now. It's you are a world killer. Now I see you. Thank you. Why is there a ring in your nose? You cattle? Damn, that's a great way to close the episode. She closed the deal and then she got hit by a take your nose ring out. But man, that's the life I, I that's the life that potentially I, I was striving, trying to get into, I was striving for. I even had like a few uh, work experience days at Metro Bank Investment Banking. It's like, you see the trading floor, you see that people are trading debt securities, insurance securities, and it's, I don't know how similar this is to that, but man, I, I even the people I met on a certain days, I could see if they faced that much pressure, they would crumble, or you know, you could see the intense workload they were under, but then the reward of closing a deal, making the big money, feeling like that sort of way, you can see why such like a entrapping environment, such a good environment, I didn't even know, that was mad. So if you did enjoy today's reaction to industry episode one, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you've seen it. Let me know if you want to keep, um, let me know if you want me to keep reacting to this. I'll catch you again soon. All up in my head, that's how I behead. Passing up the same, waking up the same. All up in my head, that's just how I behead.